Hello, hello and welcome. Welcome to Around the Town with Mark. I am Mark Whalen, your host. You know I always tell you that we're glad to have you tune in and visit with us. Well, we are glad to have you tune in and visit with us. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy another fun and informative show today. Well, we've got lots of historic and beautiful buildings all around our area, but there's one that's particularly special. It's a building where you can go and not just enjoy a beautiful historic building, but you can walk in free, you can go there and learn, you can go there and read a wonderful book, you can surf the web, you can do all kinds of fun things. There are lots of community events to enjoy in this beautiful building. What am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about the Bill Memorial Library in Groton. It's that beautiful library up by the Groton Monument. And my guest today is going to tell us all about the Bill Memorial Library. So allow me to introduce the director, Wendy Canal. Wendy, welcome to Around the Town with Mark. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, we're delighted to have you. And our viewers can obviously see that we've got a great display in front of you that we'll be talking about during the next 30 minutes and sharing with you that Wendy has brought to us today. But first, tell us about the Bill Memorial Library and what your visitors would experience if they went there, say, today. Yes, well, the Bill Memorial is a full-service public library, so we have a collection, you know, adult materials, children, teen books for teens, the bestsellers, audiobooks, e-books, books on CD, playaways, magazines, newspapers, what you'd expect to find at a public library, also public access computers, Wi-Fi, internet. Um, we, we think of ourselves as a business center in that we have full printing, copying, scanning capabilities there as well, faxing and those types of so things. So all of those are available for anyone to just walk in and, and, and uh, those services are there. And uh, just make sure everyone knows the, the library is located at 240 Monument Street. As I mentioned in the introduction, that's by the, the Griswold um, uh, uh, Fort Griswold. Fort Griswold Fort, right? Yes. Right, exactly. And uh, could you tell us a little bit about the hours um, uh, during the week and when, um, when you're open? Yes, we open at 10 a.m. Mondays and Thursdays are our late nights, so we're open till 9 p.m. those nights. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, we close at 5. Saturday, we're open 10 to 3. And then we're closed on Sundays. Well, I uh, want to make mention that the architecture of that building is, is really spectacular. And uh, I know it's been, a lot of people think it's a Richardson style of, of building, although no, that it wasn't designed by, was it uh, William Hobson Richardson, I believe? Right, it was built by Stephen Earle of okay. Worcester, Massachusetts. Okay, in that Romanesque type, right. type style that I guess it was so popular. And, yes. and when was the library bill and, uh, built? And uh, who gave the money and who actually built the library? Well, Frederick Bill gave the money to, to build the library. He started with the collection first, so he bought the books in 1888, uh, and then the building, he, he gave the money for the land that it was on um, and had it built, and that was finished in 1890. And he dedicated it to his two sisters, Eliza and Harriet. Now, Eliza, unfortunately, had passed away at age 16 of typhoid, and uh, Harriet passed away at age 19, and we're not sure uh, why she passed away so young, but we do know that she was married at the time because we have a gift from her husband to the library in her memory. It's a beautiful marble bust of Venus de Capua. Oh, wonderful. And, and is that on display in the library for your visitors to see? It is. It's in the main reading room up on the, the, the shelves of the stacks. And obviously you have a spectacular collection. Yes, we do. The library was founded not only as a library, but also as a museum. So oh. in 1907, Frederick Bill built on a room to the library, which we now call the reference room, as a museum room. And so we had over 300 taxidermied birds, which has mm. gone to, in, in, I would say, in the two, early 2000s. It went to Denison Piquatsipo's Nature Center. So you can visit those there, and they still have the tags that say 
uh, from the collection of Gurdon Bell, and Gurdon Bell was one of Frederick's brothers. Oh, so there's a tremendous amount of history um, involved in this this beautiful library. Yes. And so tell us a little bit about what we're, what our viewers are looking at. I believe this sword is Colonel Ledger, is that it's correct? It's Colonel Ledger's sword, yes, that was gifted to the library by Colonel Ledger's family. And we share that with the Monument House. That go It goes to the Monument House in the summer when they're open for kind of the tourists to see. And then from September to Memorial Day, it, it's with us. And I, we have beautiful butterflies here. Um, everyone should really, these are spectacular. They, I've never seen anything quite so, so beautiful. Yes, and we have, I didn't count. I would think almost, certainly about 500, maybe wow. between 500 and 1,000 butterflies and other insects that are mounted. And again, this is all on display. Um, at the library? Well, or no, we were, that's an awful lot to have all, all at exactly. one time, I would say. Exactly. Yeah. We were fortunate uh, this year to get a grant from the Groton Rotary, the Bodenwine Foundation, and Chelsea Groton Foundation to build a museum case that's now in our front hall on the first floor because all the butterflies were up on, on the second floor. But in this way, we can bring it down and let public see it. Um, more readily. And do you do you rotate that that collection and that display? Um, as yes, you go we do. The year? And we rotate in collections from the community, so artists can display their work there, or people with collections can display their collections as well. And we rotate that through with our collection. Well, please share with our our viewers that the the Egyptian um, uh, piece that you have here. Everyone, this is. This is really spectacular because I'm I'm a nut about Egyptian artifacts. So they That's even right. have uh, you call it, is it you think a, a falcon? Did we talk about earlier? Or yes, it's or, a falcon or a hawk that okay. was mummified. It's from the tombs of the kings in Thebes. Wow. Yes, we also have our famous mummy hand. We actually have a, a human hand um, from a mummy. A mummy hand. Yes. Oh wow. Yes. Unfortunately, that's in a few different pieces. So. It, I couldn't bring it today, but we have right, pieces of um, grave cloth, jewelry from ancient Egypt, oh also my. artifacts from ancient Rome, some beautiful friezes and mosaics, and um, coins from Mount Vesuvius. So you, it, they have the lava, they're kind of stuck in the lava. From, really? Yes. Oh my, this is fascinating. I had no idea that, that there was such an extensive collection. Yes, we even have a, a vase from Pompeii, which unfortunately is in pieces. I don't know if it came to us in pieces or Ooh. just over time. Uh, I mean, it's still recognizable. Mm -hmm. But speaking of pottery, we also have pottery from um, the New World, so from the indigenous American population. We have some um, pottery. From. And most of this collection is, I guess, on, on your second floor, is that, is that correct? So Yes, and I've been putting it into this museum case that I described. So is, we've already is, had two collections in, so including the, the pottery pieces, the mummy hand, wow. the is, pieces from Egypt and Rome. Is, is the second floor ever open or available for any of the visitors to tour? Unfortunately, it's not. It's, okay. it's not handicapped accessible, and it, do, it just doesn't meet fire codes. Okay. So that's why we felt the necessity to have the museum case, which the, the grantors help us build, which well, we're excited well, about. Well, it sounds like you should be excited about it. It sounds fascinating. I, I, I really, as I mentioned, I had no idea that there was such an extensive collection there. And uh, I know um, that there are a lot of community events that happen at the Bill Library. Yes. One of which, of course, I have to make mention, mm -hmm. which is always the in July, and that is Art on Groton Bank. And there we have a picture of this past year, Art on Groton Bank. We pretty much just take over those beautiful grounds of the library and have this fantastic art festival. Um, so, uh, you know, it's a little early to be promoting uh, the 2017 season, but um, Art and Groton Bank is always very exciting. Uh, please tell us a little bit more about some of the other community events that happen at the library. Well, our signature event is probably Sing Along with Santa that we have in, in December. So we have, you can take, get your picture taken with Santa. We have caroling, um, hot cocoa, cookies, um, 
we have Rudolph and Mr. and Mrs. Frosty come, and it's a really wonderful uh, community event. And obviously, we're, we're in fall, so the holidays are only a couple of months away. That's right. So our viewers will want to make mark their calendars now. Uh, do you have a date already set for this year's? Um, for Sing Along with Santa, Sing -along it's December 7th. December I believe, 7th, okay. Which is a Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. And coming up really soon is our haunted library and that's we've revived a tradition of doing a haunted house at the library for uh, Halloween. Oh, so I imagine that's very very popular with the kids. Yes. Big ones and little ones and all ages, right? Right, right. And so this year we're in full swing getting ready. We're doing kind of a creepy carnival theme um, and we get a lot of help from the community, a lot of teens and um, adults helping out with that so that's a lot of fun as well and, and that benefits the friends of the library and again a, a date um, that's uh, October that? 22nd okay so October 22nd for the haunted library mm -hmm. and then December 7th for the Christmas show that you have on right so mark your calendars everybody for those two dates Make sure, uh, as they usually uh, all-day events or evening events? They're evening uh, events. Evening events, evening. okay. Yeah. And I would imagine that uh, all the information or information on these events would be on your website, is yes. that correct? Yes. Okay, and there we have the website right there, uh, billmemorial.org. And while we mention the name, um, I, I want to make mention that uh, it is the Bill Memorial Library, not to be confused. I think there's another library with the name Bill in it. Is that correct? Right. There's the Bill Library in Ledgerd. Now, Henry Bill is uh, Frederick Bill's brother. Frederick Bill is our patron, and Henry Bill uh, donated, donated the money to build a library in Ledgerd. So that's the Bill Library in Ledgerd, and okay. that's why the names are the same. Okay, now uh, I've been obviously to the grounds of the library, uh, the Bill Memorial Library up there, and uh, is, is it uh, Frederick Bill, is he um, uh, there at the library? Um, oh, yes. He, yes, he's buried in the backyard with okay. two of his wives. Oh, all right. Yes. He, his first wife passed away, and uh, his second wife, was actually the first librarian of Bill Memorial. Really? Yes. Oh, so the history only gets even more fascinating with with yes. the Bills and the wives and the brothers and and, and right. Yes. Which now, leads me into uh, we're always a stop on the um, Ghosts of Garrotten Bank tour that happens usually in October. And I believe there's a new book coming out. Um, uh, is and the Bill Memorial Library is mentioned in that book. That's uh, correct. Yes, uh, and I'm, the the name of the book is is escaping right right now. But I'm sure you you yes, know what I'm talking Ghosts about. Ghosts of Groton Bank. Ghosts of Groton Bank by That's, Hallie Keeler. Yes, and she was yeah. the former director before me. Uh huh. So and in fact, she had her book launch at the at the library. And in late August. Any little hints as to uh, the ghosts that haunt the Bill Memorial Library? Oh. Are there many, one in particular, that, uh, that uh, you want to tell us about, or is it just too much? Well, it's interesting because yeah. she, did, she did put a note in, in the book. When I first arrived, I would say, gee, I, I smell pipe smoke. Uh, and no one said anything to me like, oh yeah, you know, we, all, we smell that all the time. But apparently there were reports before I got there of other people smelling pipe smoke. So I also you, You've actually the, smelled smoke? The pipe the smoke, pipe smoke yes. in the library. Yes. But oh. other than that, I haven't, I haven't well, seen anything. I don't anything. know. I think, that's, I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> yes, it is cool. Yeah. I mean, you know, here we are, of course, going into October, into Halloween, so it's a particularly good time to be talking about ghosts and, 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 and pipe smoke that shouldn't be there. Right. Right. <laughs> I just feel like if there are ghosts there, that they're benevolent. Yes. Okay. Well, everybody loves a good ghost story, and it's always yeah. fun to be able to know that there's a local building where, where somebody you never know could be in there enjoying reading a book, and all of a sudden they're going to smell a little bit of pipe smoke. Mm -hmm. 
right? Yeah, so that could be a, that could be a whole lot of fun. Now, was Frederick Bill um, a, a native of Groton, or, or did did he live nearby? Is, is it, how did they select the land? Do you know that part of that history? I know he did live in a house that was located right next door to the library. Oh, okay. Which then was has been moved off the the original lot, but you can still see it kind of across the road. Now, are you um, like a lot of, of events? You know, uh, we, you and I both worked on community events, Art and Groton Bank, and, and such. Are you always actively seeking um, volunteers and future sponsors to support the library in a lot of these programs that you do, and even just daily? Yes, absolutely. We're we're looking for always looking for volunteers. Kind of many hands make light work, so mm -hmm. we do a lot of work through our friends group, like we do. Um, annual bulky waste pickups and, and library cleanup days. Okay. So we're always looking for volunteers for that type of thing, right? Art on Groton Bank. Mm -hmm. We need a lot of volunteers. We get volunteers for Sing Along with Santa and the Haunted Library. And are, are, is the staff um, paid staff or do you also incorporate any volunteers to help run the library on a daily basis? No, the library is run by, by our staff. Okay. Um, we do sometimes get volunteers in, um, usually, you know, high school age And kids. mainly, like you just mentioned, if there's a special event coming up or, some, or something like that. Right. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, the topic is money. Obviously, a lot of nonprofit organizations and libraries are, are seeking sponsorships and stuff. Do you have programs um, where, where, at least for some of these events, that you seek out sponsorships to help support the library? Well, we do have a benefit once a year where we look to do some fundraising. So this past year, it was um, sorry, it was jazz and chocolate two years ago, and this year we called it the Spring Swing. So it was swing dancing, okay. champagne, and um, food, and that was just a, a benefit event for the library. And is is these events? I guess they change every year. Right. Are they usually the same time of year? We've been doing it pretty much in the, sp in in the, the spring. In the spring. Yeah. And again, a nice gala event, a nice evening at the library. Yeah. Well, when people are with coming the cartels, out of. Well, which that's, was fun. was fun. And yes. people are coming out of that long winter and always looking for fun things to do in the springtime. Right. And now we're an association library. We're not municipal. We get about 10% of our funding from the town of Groton and the city of Groton. And other than that, it's our, we're funded by our endowment that Mr. Bill left us and okay. Uh, donations. Okay, so you're always looking for donations. And again, any of the information if for anything that we've been talking about, being a volunteer on our, a list of your events again, or becoming a sponsor or donating to the library would be on that website. Yes. Okay, That's and right. uh, how about the surrounding community? Um, uh, we know we mentioned that, that the Griswold Battlefield is right there, there's a museum there, you have a lot of uh, neighbors right there. Does the library uh, work directly with some of these, um, like the, the Griswold Monument, um, to promote each other? We do. Work we, yes, we try to have um, all the um, publicity for the area um, sites at the library. We also offer museum passes um, to area museums and things like the Denison Pequot Sipos Nature Center, and Florence Griswold, and, mm -hmm. and things like that. And this year, of course, we've had the, uh, the Thames Street Water Taxi. Yes. Uh, and uh, I know it's a little bit up a hill, but um, the water taxi is pretty much just, just down the hill from the library, is, isn't that right? Yes. So um, I would imagine that, uh, I mean, the water taxi's been tremendously successful this year. Everybody's been talking about it. Mm -hmm. Everybody's been riding it. And um, I imagine that's been, the library has probably benefited from the water taxi and vice versa, I would think. I imagine so. We certainly yeah. have the publicity out mm -hmm. for that. And it's very popular. We have to keep replenishing kind of the schedules and the maps and things like that. So we think it's getting a lot of use. Yeah, yeah. And uh, S Connecticut Submarine Century has been this year. Yes. Um, has there been any events or things that, that um, uh, the library has done in celebration of Connecticut Submarine Century? Yes, we're fortunate enough to get a submarine on the Connecticut Submarine Trail. Uh, uh, Groton Utilities and the city of Groton 
um, donated one to us so that we would be on the trail. It's painted by Laura Mayolo, a local mm -hmm. artist, and she's actually, she has her art in our museum case right now as well. Oh, wonderful. Um, so that's really exciting and fun. It's a, a beautiful piece and really brightens up yeah, the, and, the place. And will that, that, is that on permanent um, display at the library or, or, no. or, or that's just temporary? I think it's just through October. Okay. All right. But what a great opportunity um, for anybody to, I, I know a lot of kids love to have their photo taken um, on those little submarines all around Groton. Right. And of course, what is it, the, the Pokemon? Um, right, thing Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go, I guess, is the library involved in that as well? We did. In, in August, we kind of had a, pr a program with the Pokemon Go um, kind of craze. Interestingly, um, I read when I was researching for this um, show just about our butterfly collection and how it was very popular in Victorian times to collect butterflies. Well, apparently in Japan, it's still a very popular pastime, and Pokemon was actually inspired by that um, collecting of butterflies. Really? And insects, yes. Oh, well, and obviously we've got some beautiful butterflies that have been in your collection. Gosh, how, how old do you think these butterflies go back to? to I think they go back to the founding, the founding of the, of of the, the library. Yeah. I'm not sure who collected the specimens, if it were the bills themselves that actually mm -hmm. but collected the specimens, but they're from all over the world, mm. which is really neat. Yeah, in fact, the two in front of me, one is from South America and one is from Ceylon. But right, they 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 they're from all over and even local. Let's let's talk a little bit more about what we have here. Here is um, I believe you told me this is a Japanese uh, headrest. Is that correct? Yes, or pillow. Or pillow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So they would use that so they wouldn't mess up their hair when they slept. Oh, it's 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 fascinating. It even has uh, has a, a, a a label a label or probably a signature on it. And um, please tell us, I think you have some, some uh, beautiful little shoes that maybe we can show our viewers as well. Yes, these are um, a pair of child shoes from Lahore, India. We have a lot of um, different shoes, mo mainly from the Orient, some that are Native American and Eskimo, but this is just a, a small pair. Oh, of child shoes. Well, wow, they're they're very 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 beautiful. And uh, again, uh, to any of our viewers and your visitors, uh, at any time that these could be on display and rotating in in the museum collection. Right. And we also have a lot of geological pieces. So I brought this piece of carnelian, which is really pretty. Oh, beautiful. Um, again, they must have collected extensively just um, different rocks. So it's it's amazing to me that that it's I don't know if there are, can't be that many libraries that are almost as much of a museum um, as a library as I know it's a wonderful library but you have such an extensive museum collection that must be something that that you're very proud of. Yes, and we're learning a lot about um, like restoration and just the handling of of museum pieces. We actually had a visit last week from the traveling archivist who came yeah. in and was talking about how to preserve and um, maintain our collection. Yeah, so we're learning a lot. Cataloging it all and keeping track of, of what you have must be a, a huge task. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, are there any other, I know we, we talked a little bit earlier of programs coming up. Uh, I know, did, did you have a window restoration program? We did. Um, Last year, yeah. we did an Adopt-A-Window program. We have um, stained glass and leaded glass windows that are original to the building, and they were in need of restoration badly. They were really, um, we were afraid they would just collapse because they were, they were actually buckled. And mm. So we reached out to the community. Uh, we got a grant from the Charter Oak Foundation, and then many local people um, donated money for us to restore those. And we had a, a company called Cathedral Stained Glass come in and did, they did a wonderful job restoring the windows and they're back in. And we have plaques now that um, commemorate the gifts of, of mm -hmm. the donors so that, for those windows. That program is complete? 
It is complete, yes. Uh, and do you have any others that are upcoming that, are, that uh, our viewers should know about maybe um, to do any restoration or any, any benefits to the library? Well, we're, we're thinking about that. It's an old building, as you right. know, yeah. uh, so it is in need of a lot of um, upkeep and, and repair. For example, it's not as exciting as stained glass windows, but our gutters are in need of, of repair, which is causing some leakage into the basement and mm -hmm. um, well that's that's a that's a you know anybody that's a homeowner or a building owner knows that that the water is, is and keeping control of the water is very very important right and I would assume the age of the building that most of those are copper yes which are very very expensive <laughs> yes. to maintain to replace yes fix, and they've repair. been patched and patched again which has just left holes in them at this point so we really need to to address that I, I think that might be next on the list. So if, if there's going to be a program to find money to help with that, uh, again, will that be something that will eventually be on your website? Yes, absolutely. So everyone, what you should be continuing to do is to, of course, visit the library, but go back to that website as often as you can to see if what programs are going on. Uh, and, and obviously, if you can sponsor something, if you can help, if you can give, if you can donate, if you can volunteer, please do it because it, it's benefiting a, a very beautiful historic building. Yes, we are going into our annual appeal time right now where we reach out to our donors for, for just an annual contribution that we can use toward, toward upkeep of the building, but also our collections. I mean, we use that as, as operating money. As yep. I said, we're just an association library, so. Right. Well, well, Wendy, I, I want to thank you very much for, for being uh, my guest today and talking about the Bill Memorial Library in Groton. Uh, thank you for bringing all these wonderful, wonderful things. Um, any final comments um, for our viewers on, on the Bill Memorial Library? I don't think, well, Let's see. I mean, Come and just, visit often. Exactly. How about that? Exactly. We have programs for all ages. We're just um, initiating a cookbook book club, which okay. um, is getting a great response. So it'll involve you know potlucks and food along with the reading the books and things. So kind of a, a hybrid of a book club mm -hmm. with food. So. Um, mm -hmm. All right. We're well, excited well about great. That. Well, thank you. Well, I, I again, I, I thank you very much for being my guest today, and I want to remind all our viewers: check out the Bill Memorial Library, see this wonderful collection, visit this historic building, uh, check out a book, and read a good book. And uh, again, thank you for being on Around the Town with Mark. I also want to make mention that tomorrow, Thursday afternoon, September twenty-second here at SCC TV Studios in Groton. There is an open house art show from 5.30 to 7.30. Please come down. I'll be here. I'd love to meet you. See what goes on in this beautiful studio. Have a wine and cheese. It's a great event. We're here for you. It's open and it's free. Thank you again. Tune in real soon to Around the Town with Mark and have a wonderful day.